Welcome to another episode of the Urban Wall Street Project. I'm your host, Earl Christian III, of course. I have a question. Are you an aspiring fashion designer? Do you like the fashion industry? Do you want to know what it takes to break into the fashion industry? Well, I have a very special guest in my house tonight, a very young, special young lady who I've watched her grow and watched her do her thing and watched her create designs from a high school age. And now she's living out her dream, working hard, working steadfast, and staying focused on the true prize. So pay attention to this when the fashion is your thing and um, recognize what it takes to really get to where you want to be. Without further ado, Ms. Danielle Franklin. Danielle, hi, sweetie, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing good, thanks. Great, great. So I'm so happy to have you here. I'm so proud of you doing your thing. You know what I'm saying? I know you're still in the beginning stage and you're still grinding it out, but that's what it takes to get to where you want to be. And I know you've done a few things. You know, you've been a part of a program that was a very nice program. That's a great experience. And we're going to talk about it. But okay. before I get into it, you know, for my young ladies that might be aspiring fashion designers, when did your passion for fashion begin? Well, it definitely started in high school. Um, I always liked clothes. Um, I never was really interested in how it was made. But as I got older, I wanted to design my own clothing because I had a certain style that I was into and I couldn't really find it in the retail stores that, mm -hmm. I, that I went to. So um, definitely in high school, there was a senior, um, a young lady, who she she went to she left our high school and went to a fashion high school mm -hmm. but when she came back she always gave me little tips as to how I could start how I can show me how to draw mm -hmm. where to start and just you know gave me a lot of encouragement that's a beautiful thing so when did you so I know you always had the passion you liked it but was it in high school or when was it that you know you know this is what I think I want to do it my life. You know, I know because a lot of times in high school we enjoy things that mm -hmm. we do and we're good at it, but you know, we go on two or three years past and what we enjoyed in high school seems trivial to us. We don't want to do it. When did you realize, like, you know what, I think I really want to make a go of this? It was definitely high school, definitely 11th high grade school. to be exactly. Yeah, exactly, 11th grade. Um, I found myself drawing all the time and just picturing myself, um, you know, being a fashion designer, mm -hmm. finding free sewing classes to go to so mm -hmm. I could start learning how to sew. Um, I even considered some fashion colleges to go to. And then from there, pretty much, it, it, never, it never went away. It never went away. <laughs> it never went away. And that's great. And that's, and that's the beautiful thing. And that's what passion is. Because mm -hmm. when you're passionate about something, it doesn't go away. It actually increases over time. So do you find yeah. yourself now being more and more passionate? Yeah, definitely do. And I know, uh, you know, we, we spoke earlier and you were telling me that you were working in a fashion boutique, right? Mm -hmm. um, but there was a, a great experience that happened with a particular merch, uh, customer who came into the store and they wanted a particular dress, right? Yes. Tell us about that. Well, I work in a children's toy and bookstore and the owner, when she hired me, she told me she was interested in getting some children's clothes inside of her store and wanted mine to be the first, being that I was an aspiring entrepreneur and she finds herself being an entrepreneur and just beginning, you know, on this whole entrepreneurial route. Right. So um, pretty much I had to create a sample for the um, Allen Houston program that I joined, which we'll right. talk about later. And I brought it in the store merely just to show the boss what mm -hmm. I could do because she's never seen any of my sewing skills or anything right. like that. And I brought it in and we had a customer who was visiting from London and she saw the dress and wanted it ASAP. Wow. Wanted it as soon as possible, the same exact color. She didn't care what size it was. She thought it was amazing and wanted to spread the word to her friends and thought it would be amazing for her niece. So that was about to be an international sale, huh? <laughs> It definitely was. And so I told her, you know, I wanted to show my boss first because it was actually a sample and it was the only one I had. And she was like, okay, well, I leave Friday. Can you have another one made for me by Friday? And I was like, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And I think it was like Wednesday. So <laughs> I had to definitely crank that out and get that ready. And she was very, very pleased. Now let me ask yeah. you, since you, because when you say two days, one of the shows I, I mean, I watch, because I like a lot of, I don't really do reality, but I like shows that um, showcase and spotlight people going for their talent. Some of those reality shows, uh, um, Sheer Genius or Project One, which mm -hmm. is my favorite, even a and I just enjoy pe seeing people going for their dreams and doing what it has to do. And I'm fascinated, I'll be honest, by the fashion industry, because when I watch that Project One way, and I see individuals go out, and you have a $100 budget, Go get some material. You have mm -hmm. 30, you have 24 hours, and they create some amazing pieces within, you know, 24 yeah. hours. And, and that just strikes me as like, awesome. Like, you know, it's amazing. It to is do awesome. That. So <laughs> when you've done that, what 
take me through that process. You know, someone comes and I want this in for 36 hours. Did you have to go and buy yes. raw material? Mm -hmm. So take me through that process. So, okay. Well, if someone tells me, like when she said, I need it by Friday, I definitely, I said, okay. I had to really sit back, think, plan, and really the most important time is like budgeting my time because, you know, I also have a four-year-old, I have mm -hmm. a son. So I had to go get the fabric. Um, I had to, well, originally I had to make a pattern for mm -hmm. the actual clothing, cut the pattern out, sew it myself, and make sure it was perfect because I am a perfectionist in that area. Right, right. <laughs> it has to be perfect before I let it out. And um, so pretty, that's, that's pretty much the, the steps now for like a whole collection of clothing. It's a lot more intensive. Right, right. Yeah. So now how long did it, so you, so you started on a Wednesday? Yeah, I started on a Wednesday um, and I was done, I was done by Thursday night. It took me about four hours to make a little dress about that big, wow. but that's because I, I, you know, it just had to be perfect. I so was, did you use a machine to construct it or your mm -hmm. hand? Oh no, definitely a machine. There's certain parts of the dress being that it is little, you know, because mm -hmm. I make children's clothes for newborns, to age, I'm going to say I'm going to go up to age 12 okay. in the future. Right now it's about eight, eight years old All that right. I will go up to. But yeah, a lot of the smaller details are definitely have to be done by hand right. um, because the machine is too big to of get course. to those areas. But yeah. So now children's clothing, why particularly children? Because so most people, you know, I, I've had a couple of fashion designers. I've had individuals who plus size. I actually have two plus size mm -hmm. um, designers, which is great. And then I had another brother who does, um, who did fashion, but from an Italian perspective with an Italian clothing line, clothing mm -hmm. store, and kind of a joint venture with American um, retailers. Um, but I hadn't had anyone who's designed clo children's clothing, which is a beautiful thing. So why did you cho choose children's clothing? Uh, well, definitely I chose children's clothing because I have a four-year-old little boy and it's so hard finding clothes for him that I like. Okay. Um, a lot of retail stores, they since they mass produce things so fast, things are either very bad quality or they all look the same. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people are okay with putting their son in a pair of t-shirt and jeans and right. I'm not. He's a, he's a lot more than that to me. Right. So, you know. I want him to look a certain way in order for that to happen. I see I had to design my own stuff. Beautiful. So let me ask you, do you does, does he have a closet or his own personal collection exclusively made by mommy? Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> so what's some, of, what's some of the garments you've made for him? Um, he has some jeans I've made for him, button-up shirts. Um, right now I'm working on his, his winter coat, his wow. winter, a pea, like, you know, a little pea coat. Yes. Um, and he, I'm actually getting a sweater made, like, mm -hmm. you know, because I went to school and they, there's a difference between fabric, so woven and um, actual sweater material. Right. It, it's really different. It's now, neat. now I'm, you know, I don't really know the difference. So for my young individuals who want to do what you do, because trust me, there's some young ladies who might be like, oh, mom, I, that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Different materials. You, you just give me, you know, a succinct version. What type of materials would someone encounter or be dealing with if they got into fashion design? Oh man, there's so many I know, different, so many, so many different. Are there some main but ones that cotton, okay. uh, cotton definitely is a big one, um, and also for the young viewers, cotton is the easiest one to start out with. It doesn't rip, tear too fast. You know, you could take out threads and it won't show the holes, and um, right. so cotton is definitely something to start with. But cotton, silks, linens. Taffeta. Wow. I'm going on forever. I can, I'm sure you can go on. And I, I just got lost at taffeta. Or <laughs> taffeta. Ta taffeta. Right. You know what that was. But that's a beautiful situation. I'm so enjoying it. I'm going to talk a little bit more. But now I want to talk about um, this Allen Houston Business Foundation. And I, um, I had the privilege of, of meeting Mr. Houston and actually shooting his Father Knows Best series mm -hmm. uh, two, two, two years in a row, which is a beautiful situation. Um, and I'm going to be, you know, editing that. I'm putting it on um, the channel so people can check it out. Um, but I also know that that same the last year or two, two years ago, mm -hmm. I was present at his first um, annual the business the graduation class of this business program he has. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about this program because I know that you actually won it. So yes. before we go straight to winning it, because when mm -hmm. I heard the program, I'm like, yo, this is a serious program. I was listening to the whole ceremony, and I know. I understand what he wants to do for aspiring um, entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. and, and there's a grant that you get, but it's still very hard. Once you get that grant, you still got to put the work in. Yes. So I want people to understand it. So 
tell me about that experience from the beginning, how you even got to. I remember, I think I called you, mm -hmm. and I was telling you about this particular uh -huh. um, opportunity, <laughs> opportunity might be something you want to look into. So, so share, share the story with my viewers. Yeah, definitely. Um, the Allen Houston program, I found out about it through a family member of mine. Now, it wasn't, you know, oh, here's the information, you should try it out. It was more so, you know, um, he, he, my god brother, he was working with a, um, a, group of, a group of kids who were in the program, mm -hmm. and they were also in fashion, and he became their face of their clothing line. Right. So he was explaining to me how they had, like, office space downtown, and just, like, all this greatness. And I'm just like, well, if they're just beginning in fashion, how exactly did they get that? Like, it, right. it has to be expensive. Right. And so he was like, well, there's some program called Allen Houston Program. And I was just like, really? So tell me about it. He was like, I don't know anything about it. And I was like, no problem. Right. Went to the internet. Did your homework. Did my homework. Looked it up myself. Found it. There was an applicate. They was actually starting their round. I believe it was the first round when I found out about mm -hmm. it. It was the first round. And they had the application process, and it's pretty intensive. You have to do an essay and answer some questions and things of that sort. And at the time, I was still in school, so I was at the Art Institute in New York City mm -hmm. studying fashion for women. Okay. And I was also working. So I was in school full-time, working part-time, and I had my four-year-old little boy. So it was just like, it, it's... It was too much. I knew I couldn't put the amount of commitment into it that I really wanted to. So I let that, you know, that session pass, and I looked it up again to make sure it was still going on. Mm -hmm. I uh, reapplied. I applied, did everything, and then I had to wait. I had to wait for my interview. Right. You know, they sift through all the applications, and then they decide to interview. After they interview you, then you get a second interview. Mm -hmm. So I made it to my second interview got the acceptance, which was great. And this program pretty much is a six month intensive entrepreneurial business training boot camp. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty much what it is. And I mean, the first three months, it's set up as, um, I wanna say like classes or lectures okay. where we have um, teachers come in and they break everything down from the terminology. Um, they go through accounting with you, the business, whole aspect of wow. it um you know everything from trying to pretty much they take your dream and they try to materialize it for okay. you to make it happen right now that's the first three months the next three months is pretty much um presentations mm -hmm. you have to do powerpoint presentations in front of judges and they pretty much give you the um you know the pros and cons of what you've done right because they're preparing you, like if you had to present for people who was ready to back your company mm -hmm. with some money, they want to make sure that you can do that. Right. And the second, there's three different presentations. The second presentation is actually the competition. So now you're competing against all the businesses that are actually in the program. And about how many businesses? When I was there, it was 44 businesses. 44 businesses. So 44 were you, were businesses. Were you competing against 44 other People. Individuals? Yes. Okay. There was um, at the last minute there, who there was two winners. There was two businesses that right. won. Okay. Mine and someone else's. Right. But at the last minute, um, well, pretty much towards the end, two people linked up and became business partners. Okay. And so they won at the end also. Right. But um, so it technically was like three winners, but two businesses. Okay. So um, but yeah, so I can you compete with them. You go with your you have a business plan that's done right. um, because the second half, the last three months, you're, is boot camp. Right. You're, you're doing your executive summary, you're doing all your financials, mm -hmm. your projections, everything. I think my business plan was about 30 pages. Wow. Type print. <laughs> so it, it was a lot of late nights, staying up, mm -hmm. making sure I banged it out, got it ready for, you know, when I needed it. I had to have my PowerPoint presentations ready. Right. And I mean, in all reality, I, when I got up there, it wasn't, I had to, you know, least, like the least thought of even winning. I just, right, right. I was pretty much happy with the fact that I had a tangible business plan to say, you know what, this is my dream and it's on paper. Mm -hmm. It makes it a little more real. Right. So, you know, I was, I was pretty excited about that. And in order to finish the program, to complete it and get your certificate, you have to have your business plan and you have to go through with the last two um, presentations. Okay. So from 
on the second presentation, they picked the top six businesses. So when they picked me, very surprised uh -huh. and more nervous because now the next presentation is up in the Empire State Building wow. in front of six new judges. Okay. And um, after each presentation, the judges also give you like an evaluation form of what you did good, what right. you did bad, and everything like that. Now, the judges are individuals in the business world. Were they from the fashion world or just business people? Just business people. Okay. So we had like a financial advisor there. Um, we had some people from um, a, a lot of entrepreneurs. Okay. A lot of entrepreneurs. Um, I don't remember each and every one of them because it was a while ago, but um, definitely people who can put some good insight right. into it. So now you're in front of these individuals. Now at this stage, how many uh, competitors are left? Um, at this stage, it's only six. Six people left. It's, it's okay. well, five of us. Five of us, okay, so. Okay. Yeah, so it was about it's six of us and five people I'm competing against. Right. And um, then we get a whole new thing of, um, judges and now the judges are Trevor Jaha who is one of the um, the executives um, Jonathan Herman right. um, then and Jonathan's like the, uh, what is he, the vice president, of the president? yeah he's yeah he's a, yeah right. yeah right. and um, from from what I understand right, right. and then you have Alan Houston he's there and and Alan he's <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's he's very personable. I I just Alan is I, extremely personable. yeah he's I really never humble down to earth uh, gentleman. He I, definitely I enjoy, is. You know shooting for the, the project each summer. It's, it's a great mm -hmm. thing. What he's doing for the kids, the whole the whole uh, father knows for, best yeah. basketball retreat That's is amazing. amazing. If your father out there with a son or a mentor, look into the father knows best retreat. It happens every year. It's an amazing amazing event. You don't want to uh, miss that. But I don't want to digress. But yeah, he's there. Um, the incubator, the Lenovo. Lenovo is the company that um, provides the money for this business incubator. Right, because, yeah, because there is an award at the end yes, of this. Yes, there okay. is an award. <laughs> and um, so, you know, after sitting up there and being nervous, they have us all separated in rooms, and right. it's like this whole big thing. And then we did, I did my presentation, and I just knew that I, I, I didn't know what to think. I was just like, all right, well, I did it. I can say I'm done now and now I can move on. And mm -hmm. then we waited like two days to find out who the winner was, right. the winners were. And when they told me I won $20,000 to start my business. Beautiful. Now, that's an amazing, I have to congratulate you. That's the, how, how, that moment, that very moment, how did you feel? I felt like I finally made that next step, that, that I've finally gotten there. Uh -huh. Not to where I necessarily want to be in the future, but I have made some headway. And it lets you know that, you know what, I have talent at this because Definitely. I've gone through 44 competitors down to six and I won, you know, yeah, for fashion. That. And now you were nervous. Now when you win, did they tell you, is, like, is there like an after, an after conference to let you know why you were chosen as one of the winners? Not really. I mean, they, they give, it's kind of vague. Like I, huh? I'm still to this day trying to figure out why they chose me, but I'm not going to question it too right. much, you know. I obviously... It was good enough for me to understand that someone else believed in my right. passion just as much as I did. That I was good enough to back me with it. Right. You know. So. But I mean, but you all come. You did when you gave your presentation. Even though you're nervous, you still knew that. Well, I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm saying well, makes yeah, sense. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And I, I would say that, I had a lot of information because my, um, my whole thing, like, like I said, I'm a perfectionist. So. I did research upon research upon research. There was no question that they can ask me backwards or forward that I didn't know the answer to. Mm -hmm. And so when they had questions, and I was just spitting information, like I knew, because no one knew my industry better than me. Right. There was no one in there that was in fashion. So I was pretty much using this time to educate them because my children's clothes are also organic clothes. Exactly, organic. So they're organic. Mm -hmm. So I had to really explain to them why did you choose organic? Can you briefly explain to myself and my audience yeah. why or why you chose organic and what is organic clothing? Okay, organic clothing is pretty much it's fabric that doesn't go through any chemical processes. Okay. Like um, there's no like starting from cotton. There's no pesticides in it. Mm -hmm. There's no chemical dyes in it. Everything is all natural and it's good for the environment. Is it more expensive to purchase organic it's material? A, yeah, it is. Okay. It's more expensive. Um, at the end, it's not that much more expensive, right. but it is more expensive because a lot more time is taken into 
you know, cultivating this right. fabric and all the fibers and things like that. Right. So um, I chose this because, one, with my son, I was always really concerned about the fact that something as simple as a new pair of jeans, um, you know, the blue dye that comes off? Yes, do I? Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you have a white shirt or something, it kills it. I hate that. Exactly. That's all chemical. <laughs> so if I bought organic jeans, I would never have that problem? No. Thank you. You wouldn't. Because I, I feel like I have to buy, it's my buy, buy blue jeans. Yeah, you know, you want to rock them with a pair of boots, maybe constructions or a cream sweater, mm -hmm. but I know the underlining or the sleeves. I bought a cream sweater and I didn't know that. I, didn't, I just thought that, you know, what the heck? And it's like, it's the, it's, it's the dye. It's the, a chemical dye that's used in clothing. Now with the organic clothes, there, it's a, it goes to a whole different process. It's natural dyes that are in it. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't do it doesn't do the same thing. It okay. doesn't do the whole rubbing, and also organic clothes are much more durable, because mm -hmm. the um, fiber doesn't have to be broken down so much through chemicals. Right, okay. So it's a lot stronger. And then on top of that, as adults, we absorb about ninety percent of the chemicals that are in our clothes. Really, now, into our into our bodies. Into our bodies. So we're we're absorbing all of that dye, all, all that, those chemicals. All of you know, when you're sweating your clothes, all that's rubbing off into your pores. Wow. So. Think about a child. Their skin is a lot thinner than ours. So how much exactly are they absorbing? That's, and, that's amazing. Exactly. So especially for kids who have sensitive skin, right. eczema, like all sorts of things like that. So I wanted to protect my son from these things. Okay. So now you won this $20,000. Now, now what, what comes next? So next is the actual incubation of your business. Okay. Um, you go by quarters, so you know, every three months. You're doing something different for your business. Mm -hmm. um, so in the beginning, you go through the whole registering your business, making sure you, your, your um, business plan is really on point, making all the final you know, corrections. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that over time, your business plan will change right. a lot. <laughs> it will change a lot because then reality hits in. You know, it, Things may not work out the way you expect them to work mm -hmm. out. But that's pretty much it. You have a, I have a board of advisors. Mm -hmm. um, I have office space. Now this comes with part. Now this does this have to come out of, of your twenty thousand no. dollars? this is so this, this is, is also all provided. Part of it. This is all part of the winning. So the, so so currently you have office space. I have office space. I have twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. <laughs> I have a board of advisors. And how many uh, how many advisors are there? There are six. So you have six advisors. I have six advisors for day day clothing, clothing line. Go ahead, Jimmy. <laughs> Go ahead, do your thing. I have six advisors. I also have, also throughout the program, you get a mentor. Okay. So I still have my mentor. Um, I mean, pretty much whatever I need help in, I just say, help me, and uh -huh. they're there. <laughs> so, so what do you see Day Day Clothing in five years? Five years, I'm, I better have a Day Day store. <laughs> I know that's right. I know that's right. I want to see that 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 store and. Um, I definitely want to start one in Harlem because uh -huh. I feel like that's where the like the quality goes right. down as you go further up. Okay. So I want to start there, and I have both organic and non-organic clothing so that I could educate the people on you know the importance of organic. Definitely, definitely. Know? I just learned something myself because um, I, I want to find organic genes now. <laughs> I don't want to absorb ninety percent of the dyes and all those chemicals. I I'm reaching this level where I can. I don't have to eat up all that dye anymore. I want some, you know, some, some healthy clothing. I want healthy clothing, healthy clothing now. Right? That's amazing. Healthy clothing. That's a beautiful situation. Um, so, you know, before we, you know, we wrap it up, I know there's, like I said, there's young girls. I know they learned some lessons. I learned some great things. And I'm sure my audience has. But if you have the opportunity to talk to a high school student, like when you were in high school, if someone came back and started showing you some things, or just talking to you about some suggestions, you're like, you know what, okay. And you took advantage. If you had the opportunity to sit in front of uh, some high school girls, some junior high school mm -hmm. girls, or boys who mm -hmm. wanted to get into fashion. You know what I'm saying? We got fashion designers, males and females. What's the three solid pieces of advice you would give them? Well, number one, don't give up. Please do not give up no matter what your mother, father, outsiders may say because you know you best. And if your passion is that strong, then I know you can do it. I did it, and I have a four-year-old little boy. Worked in everything, definitely. Now, number two is definitely hard and very competitive out there, but don't let that stray you from what you want to do. Um, and be consistent. Keep with it, because the more you practice, the better you get at it. And know your industry. That's another thing. Research it. 
go to school for it. Don't let anybody tell, me, tell you you're good enough, you don't need to go to school. Know your industry so that if you run into somebody who doesn't know, they can know that they trust you enough, that you know enough, that they can back you in all you do. Beautiful, beautiful. I want to thank my guest, Ms. Dinez, for Franklin, for being a part of my, my show today. You know what I'm saying? I'm just sitting here listening, and I'm so proud of her because to see a person, a student go from what, 15, 16 in high school and have dreams and looking at the sketches of what they want to do and then to see them manifest their dream and, and stay focused and know that's where they want to be and the passion, that's a beautiful thing. And that's what the Urban Wall Street Project is about. I want to implore all of you to keep watching. If you are an entrepreneur out there, you have an entrepreneurial spirit, definitely join the Urban Wall Street Business Club at urbanwallstreet.biz because we're doing some amazing things for people across the country. As I always say, be mindful, be prosperous, stay focused, be committed to yourself. Anything's impossible. Until next time, peace. <laughs> Do your thing, no, but that's so sob, so.